Thanks for having me here, and um, Chairman Schumper, thank you for inviting me. And we're really privileged. I've had a few days to spend here in India on this trip. Um, trying to immerse myself a little bit in local culture and history. Drove a rickshaw, ate some street food, um, walked around some really great neighborhoods in Delhi and in Mumbai. Um, and really also try to uh, learn about the media landscape that Charlie has eloquently described, uh, as well as the National Geographic presence here. You know, the compelling content that you just saw in this video that's been created really by our National Geographic Indian team is creating and sharing. Uh, that reminder is, is a certain reminder of the universality of great stories. Robert McKee, who's a best-selling author and kind of guru of screenwriting in Hollywood, refers to stories as the currency of human contact. And I think that eloquently encapsulates what it is that has motivated National Geographic for the past 131 years. Our insatiable appetite for storytelling transcends language, religion, class, and culture. It's a fundamental trait, after all, that has been central to human existence since its very beginning. So it's an honor to be here in a country with a rich heritage of storytelling alongside some of the world's great storytellers. The companies represented in this year's Figgy Frames, the attendees include many of the most influential and far-reaching platforms in the world. We have a shared responsibility, though, to use this immeasurable influence as a force for good. You know, the last time I visited India was when I was president and CEO of Sesame Workshop. We were bringing a unique and powerful group of diplomats to India, the beloved Muppets. Sesame Street diplomacy, as we call it, brought the popular American children's television series, Sesame Street, to children across the globe through international co-productions and localized versions of the show. Known here as Galigali Simpson, the show is as popular as the American flagship and more importantly has fulfilled a real need for early childhood development in India. Since half of all of Indian children do not have access to preschool, Illegally, Sim Sim has had a significant positive effect on early childhood education. It's further proof of the profound social impact of media. So over a decade later, I returned to India in my role as chairman of National Geographic Partners. And I'm once again struck by the incredible energy and creativity that the Indian market offers the world. We believe deeply in the power of storytelling at Nat Geo to change the world, and I see that fully coming to fruition here in India. You know, consumers have more choices today than ever before. We like to think about how we compete every moment and every evening with every piece of content ever invented in the history of humankind, from Gone with the Wind to a cat video. We're seeing a dramatic shift from a pre-fixed media menu to a highly customized a la carte set of offerings. And this is especially true for millennials. Like most brands, we're seeking ways to engage with this audience. And we know that more than 60% of the Indian population is under the age of 35. They'll really never know a reality before an iPhone and an iPad and all the incredible devices that are, have become utilities in their lives. India's large young population is likely part of the reason that Nat Geo's Instagram is so popular here. Millennials tend to be more visual learners who have entered the world as digital natives. So as Instagram's popularity in this country is not surprising, particularly given the rapid growth in digital access and consumption. In fact, we recently surpassed 102 million Instagram followers for Nat Geo. We just surpassed Nicki Minaj. Okay. 
and Khloe Kardashian. We're catching up to Justin Bieber. So please help us. And we're the first brand in the world to do so. India represents the second largest market in social media for National Geographic in the world. We have nearly 24 million India-based followers, and it's a testament, I think, to the universality of the power of visual imagery, of people consuming and posting to the National Geographic platforms to tell stories through the power of photography. And we know that this, in many ways, this power of storytelling is what today many companies also are trying to connect to. You know, in fact, Unilever led an international study in 2017 that found that at least a third of consumers are now choosing to buy their brands that they believe are doing social or environmental good, irregardless of product choice. I believe that that number would be even higher today. The same study conducted that an estimated $1.2 trillion opportunity exists for brands that are making sustainability credentials for their customers. In our case, National Geographic is uniquely positioned as a joint venture between the National Geographic Society and not-for-profit NGO and currently 21st Century Fox, soon to be the Walt Disney Company. As a result, our give-back component is built into our organizational structure. Every year we distribute significant proceeds to every quarter, for, from every quarter rather, to the National Geographic Society to defend their work in science and exploration, to in education and storytelling, where they're giving grants to Indian photographers, environmental journalists, scientists, teachers, technologists, mappers, and various people who are trying to use their skills to make a difference in the world. This virtuous cycle of storytelling can then be cataloged and put forward on a set of megaphones that all of our media assets are able to carry throughout the country and indeed to 171 countries around the world. We can talk about Paul Salapek's 21,000 mile walk around the world, the journey of humankind from Ethiopia, where he has now walked, yes, walked from Ethiopia over the last five years and is currently in uh, in uh, UP, in central UP here in India. His most recent story of, was framed around India's water crisis and the proposed river linking system that has been designed to address it. Paul's journey is a dedicated example of so-called slow journalism. And we can provide a vehicle for being able to tell those stories that the world wants to know about. You know, we live in a world today where people are filled with worry, worry about a lot of things. We know that politics, social divides, economic divides, conflicts around the world, air pollution, and climate change are high on the list of things that make people worry every day. But we also there is a construct around wonder that people want hope for their children. They want to explore the beauty of the world, to be able to see the incredible wildlife landscape that your beautiful country has here, and be able to protect those creatures in wildlife corridors and other places. And we're trying to find a, an ability to tell those stories as well. The story of the human journey through photo camps, where we're giving uh, young people from underserved communities lessons on how to use the power of photography to tell their own stories, explore the world around them, and, and develop deep connections with others. This represents the very best of National Geographic. A 131-year-old history, as you saw, that was in many ways baked back in a certain era of exploration and now is indigenously growing in country after country. Where we're trying to bring together photography and education and exploration to change the world. 
and most especially for young people who participate. This past May, we also decided to take on the scourge of plastics in the world, where it is estimated that uh, there may be more plastic in the ocean than fish by the year 2050. This multiple year initiative to try to reduce the use of single-use plastic is being embraced in India in unprecedented ways. Last year, we launched at the India State Environment Minister's Conference a campaign with working with key policymakers and influencers intended to incite actions and reinforce the urgent need to find solutions. We have garnered significant media attention here, as well as support from many of the companies who are here today. These are just a few of the examples of the stories and projects that we are fortunate to be able to put our combined resources and talents behind. Whether it's in magazines, books, television programs, film, or digital, we strive to deliver content that aligns with our core purpose, to help people better understand the world and their role in it. Of course, we must balance our conservation, education, scientific goals with the need to develop content that resonates with our audience and ultimately generates revenues. To strike that balance is something we are committed to. Finally, working with companies who are committed toward leading with a purpose is key. We know that in many ways, this world is challenging. And companies who can step up and declare a purpose to be able to drive their brands to create emotional connections with consumers that go beyond a transactional relationship are the ones who are going to make it in the 21st century. There's a growing desire to not just consume, but to engage. Not just to entertain, but to engage. So, I pitch to you the proposition for all of you to consider how, how to harness the power of this industry, the power of storytelling to change the world, just as National Geographic did in telling Jane Goodall's story with the chimpanzees, or Bob Ballard finding the Titanic, or Heidi Lehman at Machu Picchu. How can we harness the power of this industry and burgeon a young creative class in India to change the world, to explore wonder and glory. <coughs> Stories can teach, they can inspire, they can enlighten, and they can push boundaries of our knowledge. And now to unleash all of this digital transformative media that we have at our fingertips is something that gives us a chance that we've never had before on planet Earth. Our children need us, our grandchildren need us, and let's commit to them to do the right thing for the future. Thank you so much.